Hello, welcome to this next marvellous designer tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to make a dress and I've uh, pulled some kind of samples together, some inspiration pieces. Um, and I like different bits of different dresses. Uh, but what I like to do when I'm um, creating something from scratch is to <coughs> make something that fits and then uh, adjust it to different shapes. And I find that once you get a an initial uh, piece that fits it's relatively straightforward to then adjust it to what you want so let's start that uh, let me minimize that pure ref and we'll go into MD and I'm going to use the polygon tool just to start off a piece that will fit uh, on her top half so on the references most of them um, end the top bodice part if you like uh, just above the waist or just around the waist so let's do that so I'm going to start on her waist and then move her up to just under her neckline and then draw around her arm and then down again and then connect it up there we go that's a good start and then we'll go to edit pattern and then select on the middle line right click and unfold with symmetric editing and what this does now is just allows us to change one side of the pattern and the other side will change uh, at the same time. So it just saves you having to you know, copy and duplicate and make sure things are exact and all that stuff. Um, right, so what next? Next we will grab this and right click and copy and then right click and mirror paste. And then we'll pop that over the other side there we go and now we'll arrange it on the body so to bring up your arrangement points you can press the shift and the uh, f for foxtrot um, key and then select the arrangement point you want on the back the back piece selected and then i'll just move this front piece out of the way and select the same on the front and then shift f to turn off the arrangement points because they're annoying uh, really visually messes my brain up okay so let's fit these or sew them together so on the sewing menu we'll pick segment sewing and then just sew these up as we go there we go so that's the sides and the straps and because we had that symmetric editing on it's uh, done the other side for us okay so uh, I'm pretty sure that this is too tight currently um so let's just ease off these sides a bit let's push pop those out and pop those out a little bit and then press space there we go okay so that's the top on and it doesn't look too bad but i want to uh, just adjust around the arms and around the neck a little uh, so for that initially i'm going to go to the edit curvature tool and at the neckline I'm just going to pop a little curve in there just to round it off and the same on the back just pop a little curve in and round it off uh, the arms uh, they're a little bit low so I'm just going to grab the edit pattern <coughs> grab these points uh, on the underside of the sleeve piece and then put, pop them up and press space and now it's a little bit closer and then once again we'll go to curvature I'm just going to bring that out and curve it in a bit I do it more of a curve at the bottom uh, because it tends to curve more at the bottom if that makes sense you have kind of a, a flattish part here and then it curves at the bottom and goes underneath uh, I'll kind of demonstrate if I do it in the middle and the back it kind of looks alright uh, but I think it's better if we go down to the bottom there we go so I've got a much straighter line here it's not quite so pinched and you know it's not quite so curved towards the um, the actual shoulder piece where it joins up okay so I think that's pretty good I might want to make it a little bit longer uh, but I don't think I want to mess with it too much uh, okay 
one problem I do have is that my neck piece is uh, it's too high at the front and too <laughs> too uh, low at the back so what I'm going to do with that is let's uh, get our heat map up or our uh, strain map and have a look yeah you see my shoulder pieces are quite strained and it's quite strained around the back and around the boobs but kind of expect that um, so what I'm going to do to ease off the strain at the shoulder pieces is grab my piece there and just move them up a little bit and that will give them a little extra um, <coughs> a little extra material in which to do it it's not stretching and pulling at itself so much and it's still not quite right uh, so actually what I'm going to do is pop the back up because I believe the back is pulling at the front and pulling the front tight there we go okay so the back hole is still too low but that's now more a question of moving that point upwards and the front is still a little too high so I'm going to pull that down a little bit there we go that's much more like it okay let's turn that map off oh crumbs I find those menus a little bit awkward but I'll get used to them I'm sure okay so next I had the skirt part in and there's a couple of ways you can do that uh, we can either make a circular pattern uh, or we can make a rectangular pattern and sew that on um, both have their advantages both have slightly different looks but we're going to have a look at that in the next section so I'll talk to you then okay so as I said, there's a couple of methods for making skirt. Well, there's many methods. There's two main methods that I use. And that's either a, a rectangle of cloth uh, or a, a circle. Now, both have different um, possibilities and uh, applications, but I just wanted to show you the difference um, in the look you get. So I'm going to start off with the circle. So let's grab our lines here. So these two, whoops, I've done something silly there. If I select these two lines, uh, they come to a line length of 301.4, which is kind of halfway around. So I want a, uh, a hole, um, which is 602.8. So one way I found to do this is using the ellipse tool, if I click into the viewport, and then go to circumference and type in my distance and then click OK. Now what I've got is basically a piece of cloth that will fit in the hole which is not what I really need. What I really need is some material outside of that. So double clicking on the uh, outline and right clicking and then whoops where is it offset pattern outline and uh, now the important thing here is to make sure this create internal line is clicked and then we can enter a distance in here of how far it's going to go you don't have to be right first time um, we can adjust it but I think perhaps 300 is okay if I look at sort of the distance here to here actually that is just about the length of a thigh to a knee so actually it's probably not far enough so let's go 400 and then click OK right so now I've got a nice circular piece of material uh, but I need this to be a hole in the middle so with the edit pattern tool and the line selected I can right click and convert it to a hole and now we can rotate this around a little bit and sew it up so I'm going to get it into rough position it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be close enough and I'm going to sew the front up first so the reason I'm clicking on these patterns is because when I click on a pattern it puts a blue dot where I'm clicking in 2d space so if I click there I know that that's the front of this of the skirt and if I click on this piece, I know that this is uh, the front of the top. So then I can go into my free sew tool 
so free sewing start on the top or the bottom doesn't matter and click once and then move over and click again when you get to the other side and then similarly on the skirt and that looks good all the lines are straight they're not crossing over that's what to look out for when you've uh, got your seam the wrong way around um, and on the back because I'm a little bit uh, how can I put it spatially challenged uh, I like to click off to one side so I know this is this side of the back of the skirt and that's that side the back of the dress so again there so now I want to sew in this direction and in this direction which crosses here in the 2d view but it shows proper in the in the 3d which is as we want it and when I've done that I can press the space bar to simulate whoops <laughs> and get it caught on our arms just grab that and drag it down so the circular skirt uh, gives you a perfect fit at the waist it's exact it's exactly the same size as this distance around the, the skirt so it, it's flat but as it expands out obviously more material gets um, created so you start to get folds and such like and that's a little bit different and a little bit more difficult with a 2d um, skirt or sorry a square skirt or rectangular skirt um, but we'll have a look at that in the next one and see what you think okay so let's look at a, uh, a rectangular version so if I right click and I'm just going to deactivate pattern and sewing and then I'll right click and hide that pattern I don't want to get rid of it I just want to get it out of the way let's pop that over there <coughs> so if I create a rectangle which is roughly the right size or the right size so what we're looking at uh, so it's 602.8 I can create a square which is that value so 602.8 and then uh, what did I say it's about 350 isn't it maybe 400 something like that there we go and then click OK that's created me something which is of the right size now first of all we're going to have slight difficulty in sewing this up not, it's not really difficult it's just awkward um, because where do I start and where do I finish you know normally I would perhaps start here and end up over here somewhere and then sew here but that's going to leave me a seam at the side and that may be okay but if you want a seam at the back then you know it's like perhaps not uh, but what we can do let's do that uh, I'm just going to split this to start with uh, into a uniform split and now I have kind of a front section and the back section and I'm going to arrange this somewhere around there so this is my front and then this is my back so with the sewing tools let's go to segment sewing and I'll sew that up but I can't obviously because <laughs> because it doesn't work that way okay so control z and control z and control z let's just get rid of that point now what we can do is m to n sewing so one too many uh, or few too many and with that we can use this tool here so if i click and click my first seam this is my kind of main seam and then press enter and now i can start to draw multiple seams to join to and then press enter again and it will sort that out for me let's pop that there now because I need to arrange this in a slightly different way I'm going to put my uh, arrangement points on and then pick a side point and then just move it down a little bit and now all my seams are more or less where they should be pointing in the right direction at least 
So instead of arranging it on the front, the seams will be skewed and twisted. Uh, but since I've arranged it at the side, they're kind of the right direction. So if I now press space to sim it, we'll see what happens. <laughs> it comes through a body. Let me undo that. I need to move this off to one side. That's too far into a body. There we go. Something like that. So now it fits at the waist, kind of, uh, but it's not really fitting anywhere else. It is fitting at the waist. It's just pulling it around a bit to kind of misshape it. Um, so in order to get that to you know actually fit, I need to expand the sides a little bit. So if I grab the edit pattern point and pull this, whoops, not that whole thing, but just pull this one th this way a little bit, I can get to a point where they join up or where they're much, much closer. And if I do the other side, that will bring that one a little closer as well. I can press space and they're still not joining up. Uh, well, they're not joining up mainly because I haven't sewn them. Uh, so let me sew them with the segment sew and then press space and now it kind of comes together. Leaves a few ugly things uh, but what we have now is just a much tighter skirt essentially uh, with a, a bit of an issue here to fix and if you're after a tight skirt you know this is kind of the method you want. If you want a more loose flowing skirt I would suggest the uh, the circular method because it works much better. Um, for that kind of style. Um, to get this to do the same thing we would need to uh, edit a lot of curves. So I would need a curve here and then I would need to adjust my uh, sizes so that this length, this now curved length would be 602 instead of being um, what was, what was I trying to say? <laughs> Instead of being you know, what it is, which is 656. And then if I drag that one down in a similar kind of way, we'll start to get that. And, you know, we're still getting quite a curved skirt. But the <coughs> the general problem is um, a lack of a tool uh, to make it easy for you. The um, Clo has a tool which will take a straight panel and bend it for you. Uh, well, I mean, you have to do the bending, but you know, it does the bend, and it's not in Marvelous Designer, uh, and that makes life, you know, a bit more difficult. Uh, we can not use a, a square at all. We can be a bit more selective about it. So I could, for example, on my 2D pattern window, use a polygon instead, and draw out kind of around the profile of my avatar there and then do what we did earlier I'm going to symmetric uh, unfold with symmetric on that one and then I'll copy that and mirror paste it let's go shift F get our arrangement patterns up or arrangement points rather. Let's pop that down a little bit and turn them off again and now we can sew it all up. So I'll use a free sew for this. So down that and whoops click too early there. Down there and whoops I've done it again. <laughs> exactly the same point. There we go. Of course, I need to sew it to the actual top as well. And press space. And now we've got a much better fitting, sort of tighter skirt um, to work with. We can, you know, adjust it, but as I say, that would be my preferred method for this style of skirt, starting with a single uh, piece, you know, doesn't work because you can't really get it right. And you know, I can see that there's a tiny little bit there that's poking out, um, but I just need to use the smooth curve tool there to pop 
a bit of a curve in. Oops, that's not the right place. Done it again. There we go, and there as well. And that should eliminate that. Okay, but actually, for the, the dress I'm looking at, or for the dresses I'm looking at, uh, none of them have that style skirt. So I'm going to use the circle method, um, and we'll go back to that in a few moments. Okay, so let's go back to our circle dress. And actually, just before you do that, if you've got a nice thing here, nice thing going with your circle dress and your your tighter version, save it because you can always come back to it and use it and reuse it. So let's just go file, uh, save as project, and I'll call this I don't know uh, dress starter. There we go. save in a second there we go so in my dress starter I'm not really interested in these bits here I'm going to delete them and then right click in the 3d window and show all patterns and then right click on that and activate right so where is that it's on a, in the 2d side somewhere if I can figure out which way my mouse is going there we go okay so let me just press space to redo that. Now, one thing, I was looking at my references and uh, I kind of like this skirt where it's a bit lower in the back and a bit uh, up in the front. So let's do that. Let's back to Marvelous Designer or rather Minimize Pure Ref. Come on, off you go. Now, this is fairly straightforward. What we need to do is with our Edit Pattern tool, let's double click on the outside of our circle and then just move it backwards and I'm going to keep shift held down so that uh, I just go vertically there we go and then press space and now we have that effect excellent might be a bit low in the, uh, a little bit too low in the front so let's just grab that and bring it back a little bit there we go okay so what else do I want to do uh, so I want to change the, the top a little so let's look at our PRF and what I actually like is uh, the top of this one it's got this kind of V of lace with a, a neck uh, collar piece and a little bit of a kind of uh, loose uh, sleeve going over there so let's have a go at that so first of all I want to cut up my front pattern that's what I was talking about you get like a base pattern then you can cut it up and do what you want with it. Um, so first of all, I want the collar to be a little bit tighter. So let's do that because that will help when we get to our neck piece. Again, my zooming skills are not good. Oops, I need to get a bit closer to that so I've got a little bit more accuracy. There we go. So that's tight at the front and and put that up as tight at the back. Now I've got a little bit of a problem with my points here. This is too um, flat. So you see, if you select this point here, we get this little arm, and that is our sort of kind of curve uh, arm or curve controller. Now I've just instead of it being kind of flat down as it was, I've just moved it over and extended it a bit to smooth that curve off. There we go got a little bit of poke there but that's only because I've uh, not got enough resolution in this for that yet okay so with that done I can go to my internal line tool so internal uh, poly polygon stroke line and I'm going to draw a point from there down to somewhere there and see that's giving me this V and now we can use our curve tool edit curvature to pop some curvature into it. I'm just going to adjust it so it's kind of a V going down like that. Sort of a, rather a, a U shape rather than a V shape. Okay, if you're unhappy with it you can go to edit pattern and again on each point you can select these lines and just adjust it so you can make it a little wider on the bottom. You can take a bit of the curvature up from the top one thing I would say is try and keep uh, this line 
not too uh, far away from perpendicular here um, not to the line but to the point if that makes sense I hope it does and when that's done I can select that internal line right click and cut and sew now it effectively won't change the pattern because everything is the same we've got the same volume of cloth we've got yeah and everything sewn together so the shape shouldn't change all that much sorry I'm just bothered by that <laughs> down there um, but what we do have is a separate piece which we can texture differently to the rest of our model and for that we need a new piece or a new fabric here I'll just click the add button and wait for it to catch up and I'm going to give that a grey colour I think just for now and then whoops did I not actually select it or did I say cancel or instead of ok probably and I can drag and drop that on there and now we can see you know where it is and what difference it's doing okay so next then what I want to do is put the collar piece in uh, so we'll do that in the next uh, little section so talk to you then okay so <clears throat> I'd have preferred this to have been a bit tighter really but uh, it's not so let's do it as it is so first of all I need to create some pattern pieces for this and I've just noticed that I'm not really happy with this I've got a little bit of a strangeness going on I think it's this long line here that's better although it needs to whoops not the whole thing just the pattern line or just the curve line needs to come up so if I'm too far off the perpendicular I get this V so I'm just going just to make sure it's either on or above the perpendicular to this line to make sure that's nice okay so easy way of doing this is just to select or just to create a couple of uh, square pieces or rectangular pieces rather to sew in so let's do that so I want one around the back and I want one around the front and then we'll adjust them so that they uh, match up and fit nicely so onto the rectangle tool uh, actually first I need to know my distances so my front one is uh, 81 point or 91.5 so I want 183 so let's make it 183 oops that's two um, and I'm going to make it 40 high I might change that at some point in time uh, just note that because I've got my fabric 2 selected uh, it's created my new patterns in fabric 2 there we go let's do the back so this is 84.4 so what do I want 168.8 so rectangle uh, 168.8 and 40 there we go so my arrangement points on shift F whoops sorry wrong tool I need to select that one pop that at the front select this one and pop it around the back whoops don't know what I selected there but it wasn't the right thing there we go okay so let's sew those up uh, first I'm going to turn my arrangement points off because they make my headache they're useful but I don't want to see them all the time so let's sew that side to side and then there to there I'll need the segment sewing tool for this or the free sewing tool rather there we go and let's see if I can get the direction on the back right I can hurrah and press space and there we go we have a collar it's not quite right at the back um, but that's okay we can fix that so the top is not um, tight enough so I'm going to select both lines at the top and I generally do this when I'm using the elastic I turn off the sim uh, because the default can be a little bit strong so if I turn on elastic uh, I've got a strength of 10 and a ratio of 80 now what 80 means is it will make the line 80% the size that it currently is 
Um, but I think in this case that's too much because it's only just uh, out. So I'm going to set that to 95 and then we'll start our sim off and that should tighten up a bit. It's not enough uh, but I prefer it not to be enough than too much and 90 seems to be somewhere about right. There we go. So now we have our collar. Uh, one thing I can do here to make texturing easier is actually join these two pieces together. So if I pick a side and then right click and merge it should catch up. I've got one single strip to texture now and that means I'll just have one um, seam to deal with for the texturing process. Okay. Right, so uh, what are we going to do next? Whoops, let me press space to get the sim going. Okay, so I think next I want to go up a level of detail. Um, so let's do that in the next section. Okay, so when I said detail, what I meant was a bit more resolution. So what I'm going to do is just select all my pieces here and on the particle distance I'm going to decrease it. Now I, I've probably mentioned it before but if you haven't seen the previous video particle distance is uh, basically the difference between uh, the vertices in the uh, in the pattern. So if I go to a uh, let's have a look at the whoops, mesh view you'll see each of these uh, vertex, vertex points, these uh, bits where the uh, edges meet um, the particle distance is basically the distance between the two across a line. Now I realise that all of them are identical uh, but that's because it has to kind of work out what's going on. Um, so if I decrease this particle distance uh, down to 15 I will get many more uh, polygons, many more vertices, many more edges and that will help to smooth out some of this uh, jaggedness we've got on the skirt. So if I press space now that should come out and be slightly less jaggedy. Uh, this isn't like a production level uh, 15, it's more kind of a uh, intermediate level. And just be aware that uh, MD uh, and Clo, I believe, use a very good smoothing algorithm, al uh, algorithm to, you know, make the cloth look smooth. And when you export your object uh, or your model, um, however you export it, it takes that with it. So, you know, if you get it into your uh, target application and it looks a bit more jaggedy, you might have to use like a smooth modifier uh, or a smooth, you know, pass with a brush just to get it looking a bit smoother. Okay, but uh, that's getting to where I want it to be. Uh, we will make that better later as we get to more levels of detail. Uh, but I just wanted to see that you know the skirt was going to come out and look nice. Okay, so in the next one we'll pop the sleeves on. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I've changed my mind a bit on the sleeves. I was going to go for these kind of short ones up here, but I can't see enough of it to really figure out what's going on. Uh, so actually what I'm going to do is go for these ones, which are kind of my second favourite. Uh, so let's do that. First of all though, let's go into our whoops, Marvelous Designer. And I can see uh, this is a little bit low for that kind of thing. So I'm going to grab my edit pattern here and just bring these up. There we go. Now I've got a nice kind of fit to the underarm, which you know, if you're <coughs> bottling this to rig it elsewhere, um, you know, personally, my experience of rigging, um, the closer to the armpit it is, the better, uh, because you don't get that kind of uh, weight zone in between where it doesn't really work. It's great if you're going to simulate it as cloth, uh, but not so great if you're going to add bones and rig it. So let's uh, let's make our arm then. So, what I want to do is basically copy the interior here 
and for that I'm going to need to match up some pieces so it's those two pieces there and I'm going to right click and uh, match up to center and they should match up nicely and this gives us our basically sleeve kind of join profile uh, but I'm going to adjust it a little bit because I think that is going to need a little bit of work so first of all I've got this peak here which I don't want so if I just make that a little bit more perpendicular in that side and the same on this side I'll get a much more kind of smooth curve there and it won't create any weird pinches at that point it's going to extend that to make it a bit smoother and just sim it to make sure that nothing has gone wrong there it hasn't um, and now we can add our sleeve piece so looking at the dress I think the kind of sleeve bit goes um, you know isn't very uh, far from the actual shoulder itself but our dress uh, it currently is so let's grab those two points and move them a little this way to bring it a little closer to a shoulders edge there we go that will make life a little more sensible I think okay now little trick um, I'm going to copy these pieces so right click and uh, copy and right click and paste and then I'm going to merge these together so if I select across these things with the edit pattern tool I can right click and merge where's merge gone it's not letting me merge okay I might have to separate them right that one to that one right click and merge there we go so now I have a single piece out uh, which I can start to build my sleeve off so with these two selected I can right click and offset as pattern outline uh, now I don't want to go very far uh, certainly don't want to go that far uh, let's try 50 whoops not 500 50 and uh, then click OK and now I slit the internal line that it's left and then I'll cut and sew that and now I do not want this pattern so let's delete that I don't know why I cut and sewed really I could have uh, not done that so if I bring this back over to our original pattern I can start to move these points out to make a sleeve so let me select that point first and delete it and then I'm going to pull this out not very far just to get it into some sort of semblance of order right so now I've got the right shape at the sleeve end and I need to just make sure it's right elsewhere so let's grab this and turn on our arrangement points and arrange it on the arm there we go and now we can sew it up and see how it looks that is this side isn't it it is i thought we'd gone bad there for a moment shift f so let's sew it up and we use the free toe tool so i'll click there and across and there and across to whoops oh I can't do it to that point <laughs> because it's not attached <laughs> right so now we need uh, M to N sewing so M to N segment sewing I'm going to click this one and this one and then press enter and then this one and this one and press enter there we go and press space and now you'll see that it's joined at the, the shoulder okay uh, but it's not quite right down here and we need to just adjust that so let's grab our pieces or our vertices on the ends and just make them a little wider so that it's going to come around here a little better and then we'll bring it down a little bit whoops it's best to bring it down a little bit at a time and then simulate uh, F to focus what's going on there it is and then we can sew it up 
So this time we can just use our segment tool or segment sewing tool to sew there to there, press space, and we'll see how it looks. And it's pretty good, it's not bad. So I wanted to take it down to around about the sleeve uh, because then we want to create this kind of um, expanded effect and it's a little bit of pointing around the uh, around the ends there. Uh, so we'll do that in the next video. Talk to you then. Okay, so uh, one thing that I've noticed is that the sides of my sleeves are different lengths and there may be a good reason for that but it means the sewing lengths are different and I don't like them to be too uh, too far out. So this side is 211 and this side is 186 so what I'm going to do is right click on this line and change length and call it to 11 and then I'm going to change the direction to end so that it pushes this end out rather than pushing it back onto the, uh, the sleeve so let's click OK and then press space and yeah I'm a bit more happy with that okay so now <coughs> to do this end we need to make this longer and we need to flare it out a bit so let's right click on this line and offset this pattern outline just a small amount uh, say one millimeter and then say OK and then I'm going to zoom in and grab that line and then move it down and I'm going to move it down a little bit at a time because not doing that has a tendency to make it go crazy uh, well let's demonstrate in a really exaggerated fashion so if I grab this and move it a long way you'll see that's what happens yeah the further away it gets from its origin point the the worse it is so I have a tendency just to do it a little bit let it sim do it a little bit more let it sim till it gets to where I want it and that's more or less where I want it okay so one thing is that if I sew this up now it's going to become tighter it's going to be looser at this end because the wrist is you know not quite as uh, wide as a um, shoulder as a elbow um, but I just want to make enough here so that it kind of stays out so I'm going to grab one end and move it out that way a little bit oops don't mind it evening up now and one the other way and that's okay um, but again if I sew it up it's not going to be all that exciting um, so let me sew it with the segment sewing tool so it's okay uh, but it's not that interesting um, so what I actually want to do is add a little bit of extra so I'm going to go to my edit pattern tool and I'm going to right click on one end and offset as pattern outline just to maybe 10 mil and if it's not enough whoops I need to get closer I can move uh, out a little bit so I don't need this internal line that's my mistake let me delete that I also don't need this internal line <laughs> okay now at these points I want to merge so if I select them right click um, and align to centers nothing will happen uh, but if I do the sensible thing I just select that and delete it that will work there we go sorry about that I had a bit of a brain moment I, <laughs> I think my brain was in another program okay so now I've extended that and given it a little bit of extra uh, cloth to work with and I'm going to delete that point and then sew them up uh, so where are we segment sewing and we'll sew those up and we get a little bit more of a kind of interesting uh, interesting sleeve isn't it? now um, it's got a bit of a peak in it so let's add that so let's edit curvature and I'm going to pull that out and press space 
and then I think I'm going to perhaps pull everything back up a little bit because it's a bit too close to her hand now there we go if you want to put some extra shape into that we can always add curve points uh, so if I pop a curve point in here and in here and here I can now manipulate these curve points to do you know what I want so this one I want to come out this one I want to come in and now I've got a uh, even more funky shape going on and of course you can you know be as mad as you like with that okay so let us uh, stop the sim and I'm gonna copy this now so selecting on my sleeve pattern I'm gonna right click whoops helps if I'm in transform right click and uh, where is it copy and right click and mirror paste and I'll pop that into there and then move it until it's roughly in the right place now unfortunately I haven't got any sewing which is annoying uh, so I'm going to have to sew it up uh, but I can use actually I can use just the segment so uh, I made it more complicated earlier so with the segment so active which I don't appear to have let me move that into place first there we go let's use it in the two, uh, 3d view we'll just sew those up okay so yeah I mean it's looking quite nice but it's quite plain um, I won't look to start sort of adjusting materials now and maybe even adjusting the um, fabric properties uh, in terms of the simulation uh, so we'll look at that in the next one. Talk to you then. Okay, so let's update our pattern and um, you know get our fabrics looking a bit closer to where they're going to look. So on my fabric one, which I'm going to rename as dress, I just double clicked it there. Uh, I'm going to change the type to say a velvet, and then change our color to something close to black but not actually black there we go and for the fabric at the uh, collar let's call it collar uh, we'll change that to somewhere closer to black as well and okay but we'll also add some opacity to it so if I go to 50% it's going to be really really transparent so just you know between 50 and 100 you know just work it to um, what you feel is right for whatever you're doing okay so that looks a bit nicer yeah at least it's a bit closer to the end but you know there's no kind of difference across it and i want to create some difference in terms of having some trims and maybe some edges to uh, to work with and we're going to do that on the skirt first so for the skirt I'm going to double click on the outline and find a uh, find its length which is uh, 3112 millimeters so I'm going to create a long thin rectangle uh, so it's 3112.1 and let's make it 20 deep just to give us a chance and say okay and we'll add a new fabric for this one which we'll call uh, trim And then I'm going to, uh, well, no, I'll leave colours alone for the minute. I still be able to see it. Okay, so that should be in my viewport somewhere. Uh, and I'll just apply that trim material to it. And what we want to do is sew it up now. So let's make it a bit more central. So with my free sew tool, I'm going to start at the back of this skirt and draw around and click. And then we'll go from one side to the other on the trim and now this is a little bit you know awkward here if you sim it from here it will go nuts uh, but there's a handy little option uh, whereby we can select that right click and superimpose now I don't want to superimpose it over the skirt I want it to be under um, but I don't want to go super uh, superimpose under because that just puts it under the skirt behind it I want it below so 
in this case it's superimpose side and that should match it up nicely and then we can press space to get that going now uh, I made this a bit thicker than I perhaps wanted to uh, for a simple reason uh, the thinner it is the harder it is to sew uh, just in terms of the visual viewport especially with a really wide piece so what I'm going to do is just go in here and just make that a little bit thinner and press space okay so that's the skirt part uh, the sleeve is going to be slightly easier uh, because we're just going to select our lines right click offset as internal line and let's say five millimeters use the extend option uh, I don't want eight of them I was just experimenting with something there just one and click OK and then we'll right click on that line and cut and sew and there we go all I need to do is drag my trims onto there my trim material onto there and they should be good okay so the top of the neck is going to be similarly easy Oops. Just select our top line, both lines in this case, right click, offset as internal line, 5mm, extend, right click, cut and sew, and then we'll drag our trim onto there. There we go. Now, the last one to do is the uh, neck piece, and there's a little bit, you know, around this uh, kind of collar area. Um, there's a little bit of fiddling to do um, so I'm going to stop this video here and do that in the next one okay so I want to put a trim around this collar piece and there's an issue with that so if I right click and actually what I'm going to do first before I do that just to make my life easier uh, I'm going to right click on this and remove linked editing there we go so if I select both these lines and right click and offset as internal line add to five millimeters with the extend and then do the same at the other side and again I'm going to disable my uh, linked editing where is it I don't see it somewhere ah remove linked editing not disable there we go and select this one and right click offset as internal line five millimeters again and click OK Oops, I don't know what's going on there so right click offset as internal line five millimeters OK there we go must have done something silly last time so if I now right click on this line and extend to trim and add point to pattern outline it's going to add me a point there that means I can measure this le length and this length is eight millimeters and that's great except this length uh, if I double click on there and right click extend to trim and add point to pattern outline is five millimeters 5.2 so <clears throat> I've got a mismatch and I need to deal with that otherwise it's going to look really strange so I can either move this, you know, I can offset it further, um, or you know, I can move the pieces. And I'm not sure I've found the right compromise yet, um, but I'm going to try an offset further. So first of all, what I'm going to do is delete this internal line, and then delete these extra points that we created and then I'm going to create an extra point here and right click that's uh, not yeah right click and split um, but I want this to be eight millimeters and say okay so that's how far I need it to be so if I select our line here and then right click offset as internal line just move that out of the way a bit I just want to inch this up until I get to eight millimeters until I get to 
that point and it's never ever actually going to get there uh, there's always going to be a little bit of a mismatch so I'm going to err on the side of caution uh, and perhaps, uh, perhaps I'll go over let's go over and see what happens and as you can see it's not quite there but it's so close I'm just going to grab it and move it over the top and then similarly here I'm going to zoom in and I think that actually moved with it so that's good Oh, it didn't move with it at all. Uh, I haven't offset it. So let's uh, split that one to 8mm to give us a point to look at. And then zoom in and just pop that, oops, that shape over that point. There we go. So now with this line selected, I can right click and cut and sew. And I can do the same on the back, right click and cut and sew and they should be pretty damn close so let's pop the trim onto there and press space so the only real issue now is it comes to that point and it's fine uh, but actually the the line on the back uh, is a bit scrunched so what I'm going to do is grab those two points and move them down a little bit and then press space just to unscrunch them a bit so just so that it's a little bit more uh, consistent I can also if I want to uh, go to my edit curvature and just put a little more curve at one end just so that it's not quite so pinched as we're going around that corner a little bit of extra geometry in terms of pattern and distance will help us with that um, but I think that's a, a pretty good method of, of doing it. Okay, so now we've got that done, let's uh, update this trim. Let's make it a silky material. So go silk satin, and again, somewhere close to black that isn't black, and okay. And now we have something. Don't think I went quite dark enough there. There we go, let's try that. There. So that's uh, a little bit nicer. Um, we could put a band around the waist if we wanted. Um, we could do all sorts of things, but I think we're roughly about where I wanted to be. Um, in terms of actual materials, I want to put a lace up here, and uh, we'll have a go at that, I think. Yeah, we'll do that in the next one. Okay, small caveat here, in that this wouldn't be the place where I ultimately texture this, uh, I would do it in substance. Um, and the reason for that is my projection methods in here are limited. And I'll show you what the problem is. So if I go into the collar fabric, and in the opacity I'm going to put it back to 100. Uh, and then we're going to create an opacity map. And if I go here, I'm just going to paste in my directory. I know my thing is and then select this lace there we go now what I've got is a seam between the two pieces and I'd expect that from hit from this because um, they're not one UV island so it's not going to project it in a consistent way you could work to make it one island but there are issues with that uh, well let's just have a, a think of the method so what I would typically do is pop that somewhere central to the collar piece below and what I need to do is kind of fill in this bit so I'd have to put two points in there and move um, you know curve that down and then join it together but I would have to do the same on the top otherwise I'd just be adding um, additional um, material which is going to spoil the fit so typically I would do this in Substance Painter. There we go. So now with our opacity map on, we've got a nice, uh, if flawed, uh, lace collar. Um, we could add, what? We could add not an awful lot else to that in here really. Um, except to say, 
I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> what I'm going to do next is <coughs> just apply a pose to it because applying a pose to it is going to, you know, give it a, a little bit more, um, yeah, a little bit more dynamism, shall we say. Uh, so we'll do that in the next and final bit, I think. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so uh, applying a pose is straightforward. I've got the avatar selected and under the avatar directory in the library, uh, we should have in your avatar folder a pose fo uh, area. Uh, now, I mean, it's easier to, it's easy when there's a pose here. There's not many poses for the stylized avatar. Um, and if you have poses from externally because you're using a different figure, then you've got a good library there. Uh, but I wish there were more for the standard ones personally. Uh, so we can try a pose out. So with that selected, I'm going to apply a pose. Uh, pose and joint translations. Maintain current shoes. And OK. There we go. And off she goes starts to pose with our lovely dress and um, we can pull this around of course once it's finished and have a look to see how it is perhaps an asymmetrical pose would be nicer uh, let's try this one and okay just be wary of ones where her hand intersects with the um, with the skirt because that can can cause some issues. Uh, let's try a more dynamic one. And okay. Oops, see that's the sort of thing you get there. That's uh, a more dynamic pose, but not very suitable for the dress. Uh, you'll see I get some poke through in places. You can tug that out. That's not too bad. There we go. And. I think our first one was probably uh, my favourite, so let's do that one. There we go. I am getting some pokes around right to the arms, but nothing that uh, I wouldn't expect, frankly. Once we're on, we get real close to the uh, the body. You know, the both sides of the cloth from the arm and the um, you know the body part. Uh, kind of intersect and interfere with each other it's uh, not unusual so there we go there we have a we have a nice sort of gothy style dress um, and earlier on you made like a template that you could modify into other dresses so I hope you found that useful um, if you have any questions ask, ask below um, yeah any comments suggestions otherwise yeah just feel free uh, so I'll talk to you again in another session